Uh, welcome to our January Janice Black Warner Speaker Series for 2023, our first speaker series of the new year. Uh, we're very excited to welcome you all here this evening, and what a wonderful way to kick off the new year with this inspirational speaker. Um, before we get started, I just want to let you guys know a little bit about NAMI Westside Los Angeles and some of our programs. We have classes, support groups, you can become a member. Um, Marian um, is our communications administrator. She's right over there and she's going to be dropping some things in the chat. So if you're not familiar with our programs and services, please check them out. They're all free. Um, and then also, um, and with 988, it's a new initiative. So if you have called 988 during a mental health crisis, the LA Times is really curious to hear about your story. So there is um, a link there that you can um, click on and share your story. Um, and speaking of inspirational stories, um, we are going to hear from our guest this evening, um, Brenda Sarai Zuniga. Um, she is a NAMI mental health advocate and beauty queen inside and out. Brenda is a motivational speaker, a mindfulness coach, comedian, singer, author, and humanitarian determined to create positive change in the world. She's also one of our amazing Ending the Silence presenters. She uses practical tools backed by neuroscience. And this evening, you're going to learn techniques on how to reduce anxiety, depression, and stress. These same tools are known to increase happiness, self-esteem, and overall well-being. So tonight's presentation will be an interactive mindfulness workshop. So if you have a moment, maybe get a, a pen and a paper. Um, that will be helpful um, as we go through the process here. So if you want to take a moment to do that. And all attendees are going to be receiving a free gratitude journal prompt and an exclusive link to a self-compassion hug video guided by Brenda and Kat Graham. So without further ado, please help me in welcoming Brenda Tsurai Zuniga. Oh, hi, thank you so much for that epic intro. I ask that I be introed like that everywhere at all times from here on out. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, hi everybody, my name is Brenda Sarai Zuniga and I'm here to have fun getting mental with all of you. Thank you so much for being here. I'm very, very grateful. Um, I know so many of you, and again, this means so much to me. This is a gift from NAMI, Janice Black Warner and I, for everybody to have a great mental start to the year. You know, I already feel it. This is a wonderful year with great energy already. So let's keep it going. Some of the tools that we're gonna learn today, are gonna be immediate. We're gonna be working through them. We're gonna be doing them together. And then with some of the videos that you're gonna see, you can definitely practice them everywhere else. They're very, very easy. So I don't want you to feel overwhelmed by any of the information that, that we received today. So I have a PowerPoint for you all. Let's see. Amazing. Oh, let's go all the way to the beginning. Let's not skip ahead. So for those of you who do not know me, which is probably most of you, my name is Brenda Sarai Zuniga. And as Aaron said, I'm a musical comedian, motivational speaker, mindfulness coach, singer, podcast host, author, humanitarian, and your new friend. All right. I want that last one to be the one that sticks. Your new, your new friend. So I was also Miss Burbank USA, as Erin said, I participated in pageants. Uh, when I was Miss Burbank USA, I competed at Miss California USA and made it to semifinals. Here's a picture of me there. And a lot of the names on this dress, or I should say all the names on the dress, are donors who donated to numerous charities, NAMI being one of them. And uh, we raised about $10,000 for, for those in need, which was incredible. And I was trying to find her name, but Janice Black Warner, who created these speaker series and sponsors them, is on this dress. She was a big donor um, to the Brenda Stress charity campaign at Miss California USA. So I wanted to make sure I give her a big shout out. And yeah, so all right, how many of you, okay, how many of you are familiar with mindfulness? 
and meditation. How many of you, you can put it in the, put a little emoji, like a hands up or yeah, that would help me. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Whatever emoji you want. I love it. Okay, sweet. So this is going to be an interactive workshop as well. Okay. Anytime that we ask questions or whatever, just raise your hand or put an emoji. All right. So the first thing that we're going to cover today is gratitude. How many of you are familiar with the practice of gratitude? And how many? Yeah, amazing. I love all these hearts. I'm seeing in the hands up. Love it. Love it. Love it. Awesome. So gratitude. Why is gratitude important? Gratitude is incredibly important because gratitude helps rewire the brain. Have any of you heard of the negativity bias? I'm going to be looking. It's okay. You can shake your head. No, be looking. Okay. I see a few no's. Amazing. That's what I'm here for. The negativity bias. This means that back in our caveman era days, all right, we needed to look where the danger was. We needed to see where the threats were in order for us to be alive. That's what needed to happen. We needed to focus on the negative all the time. But that doesn't need to happen now, you know, because I don't know about you, but I definitely do not have any lions or tigers in my backyard as they did back in the day. They needed to see where these lions and tigers were. They needed to, but not anymore. See, the thing is, our brain hasn't caught up yet to that, you would think. But no, our brain still feels that we need to focus on the negative, which is why negative situations and emotions stick way more than neutral or positive experiences. But it doesn't have to be that way. We can absolutely rewire the brain. And one of the easiest ways to rewire the brain is through gratitude. So right now we're gonna take a minute to name three things that we're grateful for, okay? You can write it down in your journal. And I also would love it if you put one thing that you're grateful for in the chat box. Okay, I'm going to go first. So I am grateful to be here. I That's what I'm grateful for. Let's see. Liz says pets, music, and colors. Yes, I love that. Dana, I hope I'm saying that correctly. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Dana says my therapist. Yes. Oh my gosh. I love my therapist. She's incredible. And then I added my new one and it's Dana. Dana. Love it. That's not my old one. My new one. (laughs) I love it. Dana. Love it. Love it. Love it. Awesome. Marina says health. Love it. Janice Black Warner. Yes. Hi, Janice. You are here. Janice says my health. Erin says, I'm grateful for my family. Alexis says, I'm grateful for my family. Ruan, please tell me if I'm saying that wrong also. Good friends. Lisa Sagario says, for my kids. Oh, I love that. Marianne says, family and friends. Johnny says, my tortoise. (laughs) Your tortoise is awesome. Um, Irene says, family experiences, life. Love it. Erin says, physical movement. Angie says, I'm grateful to be a great mother to my daughter. Aw. Kara says, family. Rebecca says, I'm grateful for my family. Joanne says, my siblings, friends, and faith community. Bennett says, the sun. I am so grateful for the sun also. It provides a lot of vitamin D. Janice Black says, Brenda, as our speaker. <laughs> Aw, Janice, you're the best. <laughs> and Judy says, grateful for my daughters and family. Johnny says, hope. Yes. I don't know about all of you, but reading this list made me so much happier in this minute, in this minute that we read this, I felt so happy because these are all positive things that are happening all around us right now. Right. And in a world where we're constantly bombarded for things that we need to fear or things that we need to be on the lookout for, you know, there are still so many beautiful things that are happening around us at every single moment. And this is one of the ways that we can begin to rewire our brain, to focus on the positive and have that be our default. 
Also, when we are focusing on the positive and naming things that we're grateful for, it changes the structure of the brain. It strengthens our prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for, let's see, so many things. My God, I you just witnessed my ADHD in action. I got so excited. I had about like a million different thoughts flood. I'm like, which one do I choose? <laughs> so you can, it, gosh, prefrontal cortex is responsible for memory, attention, focus, um, positive feelings. And it also lessens the tie to the amygdala, which is our fight or flight responsible for hostility, anger, depression, anxiety. So it lessens the connections to the fear centers of the brain while strengthening the connections to the positive feel-good centers of the brain. And it starts with simple gratitude. That is all. Isn't that amazing? All right. So now I'm going to show you a little bit about belly breathing. Who is familiar with the art of belly breathing? Put an emoji. You can put a heart, whatever emoji you want. I'd love to see how many of you know about belly breathing. Okay. All right. That's what I'm here for. That's okay. Don't feel shy. Cool. So why is belly breathing important? It reduces stress, reduces anxiety. It calms the central nervous system. It activates our parasympathetic nervous system, and it brings awareness to the present moment. So that's a word that I want everyone to begin to practice, parasympathetic, okay, parasympathetic system. That's a word that I want everybody to begin remembering, because whenever that is activated, that sends a, that sends a signal to our brain that we are calm, we're cool, we're collected, okay? So... Belly breathing is wonderful, wonderful in aiding and reducing anxiety, okay? What may anxiety look like, right? It can look like so many different things. It can look like irritability. It can look like obsessive behaviors. It can look like dizziness or numbness, overindulgence, overscheduling and overworking, sleepiness or insomnia, lack of concentration, avoidance. So anxiety is not just one one size fits all it's there's so many different things that can manifest as anxiety or anxiety can manifest as and belly breathing is a wonderful way all right to help reduce that now i'm going to show you a video to kind of guide you on how to begin belly breathing because it's a diaphragm breathing it's completely different than what we are used to so i'm going to go ahead and share my zoom Share my screen a minute. All right. And we're going to watch this really short video, okay? Diaphragmatic breathing, aka belly breathing, is our most efficient breath. It's also a calming breath. It taps into the nervous system and tells it to calm down. When we were first born, if there weren't any complications, we were all born as belly breathers. As we get older, we tend to become more thoracic chest breathers, much like this. So I'm going to teach you how to breathe with your belly. Start by laying down on your back. Place one hand on your chest and one hand on your belly. Take a slow, deep breath in through your nose. Feel your belly rise. Breathe out. Feel your belly flatten. Try to keep the hand on your chest as still as possible. Repeat for 10 breaths. You may place a small object on your belly instead of your hand, and you'll notice it moving up and down. Let's move to a standing position. Put one hand on your chest, one hand on your belly. Breathe in slowly through your nose. Feel your belly rise. Breathe out. Feel your belly flatten. Try to keep your hand on your chest as still as possible. Repeat for 10 breaths. Finally, let's come to a comfortable seated position. Place one hand on your chest and one hand on your belly. Breathe in slowly through your nose. Feel your belly rise. Breathe out. Feel your belly flatten. Try to keep the hand on your chest as still as possible. Repeat for 10 breaths. All right, so now that all of us saw how to practice a belly breath, we're gonna do it together, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to guide us through a belly breath. We're going to inhale for four seconds through the nose. All right. 
and we're going to exhale through the mouth. We're going to exhale for six seconds, right? I want everybody to put their hand on their chest, hand on their belly. And when I say begin, you inhale for four, you exhale for six, and we're going to do a count of three, okay? We're going to do sets of three, All right? Ready? And begin. One, two, three, four, exhale. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ready? And begin. One, two, three, four, exhale. One, two, three, four, five, six. One more time. Ready? And begin. One, two, three, four, exhale. One, two, three, four, five, six. You may now open your eyes if your eyes were closed. How did that belly breath make you feel? I want you to put it in the chat box. How do you feel after that set of three? I feel even though I was just guiding it, I was still practicing belly breathing myself. I feel relaxed and go first. Liz says, I need to strengthen my lungs because four and six seconds were long. Yeah, that's a great observation. I totally know that feeling. Totally. Lisa says calm. Irene says calm, relaxed. Angie says calm. Aw. Alexa says I even I feel even more relaxed. Rebecca says elevated. Kara says calm and relaxed. Judy says relaxed and calm. Aaron said reset. I love it. So this is a belly breath that you can practice anytime, anywhere. Okay. Isn't that beautiful that we have that tool? I wish I had this tool when I was a teen. My gosh, this is incredible. I wish I knew this when I was a kid, you know? So that's one of the things that I love to do. I love bringing this to kids because could you imagine, really, could you imagine how different things would be if we learned this in school? So I love it. Thank you for joining me in that belly breath. Now I have some more awesome... things to share with you. We're going to move on over right now to <laughs> solfeggio frequencies. Who has heard of solfeggio frequencies? Yeah, Johnny, love it. Lisa, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> amazing. If you have not heard of solfeggio frequencies, this is what I'm here for. So this is great. I love it. Okay. So check this out, everybody, all right? I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen again. Yep, give me one second. Perfect. Solfeggio frequencies. The term solfeggio frequencies is used to refer to certain tones that can help heal different parts of the brain and the body. Particular, particular sound patterns in the form of solfeggio frequencies interact with your brain to generate vibrations within your body, which can induce prominent effects. These effects can lead to a state of relaxation, calmness, sleep, and stress relief. Isn't that amazing? Oh, and they're pretty premium version. Wait, no. We're in, we're in Mercury retrograde, right, everybody? That's, that's what's going on. Okay. Let's see. Cool. So this is one of my favorite things to talk about. Don't get, don't get overwhelmed by this photo. I'm going to break it down for you. Okay. All of us have brain waves that we exhibit throughout the day. We exhibit delta, theta, alpha, beta, and gamma. What does that mean? Right. What does that mean? When we are in delta brain wave, we are asleep. We are in deep REM sleep. When we are in a theta brainwave, we are calm or relaxed. It's the subconscious mind where it's mostly active. It's where self-hypnosis can happen. Um, it's when we're highly creative as well. When we are in alpha brainwaves, we are also calm and relaxed, but we are more active. 
When we are in beta brain waves, we are very active. There's a lot of stimulation going on. We are either very excited. That's also a brain wave that is active when we are anxious, very anxious. Now, when we are in gamma, there's a lot of order in the brain. High stimulation, high, high, high stimulation, high alertness, all right? So what do these brain waves have anything to do with how we feel and how to reduce anxiety, how to feel better? Well, these brain waves, what if I told you that just by listening to certain frequencies, we can tap into these brain waves and bring our brain back to a state of calm where we can exhibit a theta state of being or an alpha brainwave state of being. So let's say we are in beta. So we're highly anxious. We're, we're feeling overwhelmed. If we listen to a solfeggio frequency that is of a theta, our brain will begin to, let's say, listen to the frequencies. The frequencies will go into our brain and our brain's panicking. Our brain's like, wait, what are you doing here? We're panicking. You're theta. What, why are you being activated? This is, what, what are you doing here? Theta will then go, no, we're here because we're being activated now. And our brain's like, wait, no, you shouldn't be here though. Theta goes, well, I am. And so then the rest of the brain goes, oh, you're right. So then does that mean we're calm? Theta goes, yeah, that means we're calm, <laughs> means we're getting calmer. So then the rest of the brain will communicate to the other parts and say, hey guys, we are in theta now, I guess, because theta's here. So we need to chill. And the rest of the brain has no other choice but to do so just by listening to these frequencies and practicing belly breath. They go hand in hand. So by the end of this workshop, we're going to be doing a guided meditation with a theta frequency. Okay. So I wanted to explain that to all of you, because this is a wonderful way that we can tap into these different brain waves. And this is called biohacking. Let's see. Now, solfeggio frequencies. There's different frequencies over here. The lower the frequency, all right, it deals a lot with muscles and pain relief and releases tension. The higher the frequency, the more stimulation you will feel, the more, the more energy you will feel. So if you want to go to sleep, if you really want to calm down, 174, 285, and 396, even 417 would be the ones that you'd want to listen to. If you want more energy, if you're feeling kind of sluggish, but you want to biohack and feel more energized than anything from over here, all right? So solfeggio frequencies, the term solfeggio frequencies is used to refer to, we used to refer to certain tones that can help heal different parts of the brain and body. Please remember that anytime. And the reason why I say please remember that is because the brain does not listen to us unless we repeatedly tell ourselves these things. You may want the brain to just pick this information up and go, okay, that works. But that's not how the brain works. The brain is like a toddler. You need to bring it in. You need to explain things to them calmly and repeatedly over and over and over again, which leads to my next practical tool of positive affirmations. Positive affirmations. How many of you are familiar with positive affirmations? Positive affirmations examples include, I am great. I am amazing. I am kind. I'm loving. Okay, great. How many of you practice positive affirmations? You can put an emoji, put it in the chat box. Great. Okay. I love that. Have some direct messages. Amazing. Yes. Great. I love that you practice this. Angie, let's see who else am I missing? Rebecca. Great. I love it. So I'm going to show you a little bit more on the positive affirmations over here. What we feed our mind becomes our reality. Our thoughts dictate our behavior. Our behavior dictate, dictates our actions and our actions create our reality. Everything started with a thought, right? Every idea created 
began with a thought. A thought is the ancestor of every idea. But how did we get there? Like I just said, our thoughts dictate our behavior. Our behavior dictates our actions. And our actions dictate our reality. Our thoughts are that powerful. What we tell ourselves matters. Why? Because 95% of what we do is all based off the subconscious mind. We are all just walking subconscious minds right now. Our subconscious mind picks up any repeated sentence, anything that's repeated to us. Why? It's called auto-suggestion. So, for example, you listen to a new song on the radio, right? That's happened to me where I listen to, oh, uh, I don't know, the new artist is coming up. I'm like, this song sucks. <laughs> I hate this song. <laughs> Who would like this song? My God. And then a week later, I'm over here bopping my head and singing to it. Though I never, ever once read the lyrics to the song. I never once actually took the time to even learn the name of the song. But all of a sudden, I'm singing it, right? That's happened to all of us, right? Why? Because of auto-suggestion. It's repeated over and over and over again. So if we repeat things to ourselves like, I'm stupid, or that was so dumb, oh my God, you may think that that doesn't have an effect. Let's say you just say it quickly, like, oh, that's so dumb of you, never do it again. But let's say you don't say it for the rest of the day. Just the fact that you said that once, the brain listens and picks that up. Our subconscious mind takes it and goes, okay, then that's what we are. We're stupid, we're dumb. And so the next time that we do something that's remotely similar to when we said that we were dumb and stupid, our brain's gonna fire off and go, hey, hey, remember we're dumb, we're stupid. We can't do that. And so then we'll probably hesitate or we won't do it or we'll get all, all in our head about it. Why? Because our brain's always trying to protect us. That's the thing. Our brain just listens to what we say and our brain thinks it's just protecting us. But we are so powerful that we can begin to change the thoughts and thought process and auto-suggest ourselves into empowerment. Like saying, I'm incredible. I am kind. I am loving. I am lovable. I am worthy. Words like this, statements like these matter. When you repeat them to yourself over and over and over again, like I said, the brain has no other choice than to take it in and take that in as auto-suggestion. So right now I want everybody to practice a positive affirmation about themselves. What is one positive affirmation about yourself? I'm gonna go first. One positive affirmation about myself is I am loving. I'm going to write that down. I am loving. That's a positive affirmation. I am worthy. You know what? I'm going to do two. I am worthy. Johnny says, I am enough. Yes, you are. Donna says, I am generous. Yes. Alexa says, I am kind and loving. Yes, you are. And by the way, as I'm reading these, go ahead and read these out loud as well. All right. And tell me how you feel afterwards, because I'm feeling really good as I'm reading this. Even though these are your answers, because I'm reading them out loud, my brain is going, oh, that's us. Oh, so that's what we are. Oh, so that's cool. So let's see. Try it yourself too. Let's see. Angie says, I am loved. Yes, you are, Angie. You are so loved. Denise says, I am kind. Yes. Oh, hello there, Irina. Irina says, I am healthy. Kara says, I am resilient. Lisa says, I am creative and keep unlocking new creative levels. Ooh, I felt that. Yes. Yes, queen. Rebecca, I am courageous. Yes, you are. Irene says, I am optimistic. Yes, I love that. I am optimistic. Have you been reading these as well? Have you have you also been following along? Because I feel really good reading these things. I'm kind, I'm healthy, I'm resilient. Again, the brain does not know the difference at all. 
between reading this because somebody else wrote it or because you you said it yourself. So this is one of the ways that we can begin to train the mind to start thinking more positive, to rewire the subconscious mind. And this is a very quick and easy biohacking tool. Aaron says, I am light. Oh, yes, you are. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. All right. So this is just a quick and easy way for positive affirmations. I'm going to go ahead and see what the next topic is. Ah, yes, of course, self-compassion. Now, let's be honest here. All right. This is a safe space. How many of us practice true self-compassion every day? Raise your hand, put an emoji. Do you practice self-compassion with yourself? I wish I saw way more emojis up, right? Look at, and you're not alone. You're not alone though. But this is why it's so important to practice self-compassion because you are not alone. And what is self-compassion? How do we practice self-compassion? What is it? We hear it all the time, right? We hear hashtag self-care. Oh, you can't love others unless you love yourself. Ah, we hear that all the time. But what does that mean? And what's a practical way that we can begin to practice self-compassion? Well, I'm going to show you. And first of all, why is self-compassion so important, right? So let's see. It reduces anxiety, stress, depression, frustration, impatience, hopelessness. It increases happiness, self-esteem, resilience, productivity, motivation, focus, overall well-being, and much more. What you nurture will blossom. Self-compassion allows us to nurture the person we are with 24-7, and that is you. You are with yourself 24-7. We have to be each other's best friend. We have to, because if not, this is... It's not going to lead to anywhere great. Let's say the great athletes, and I, and I say athletes because of the next example that I'm going to give, but do you think great athletes go out into the field and tell themselves, I suck. I'm so not going to make this touchdown. I'm so not going to make this home run. This sucks. No, they're very kind to themselves and they go, I'm going to make it. I'm going to do it. We're going to go out there. We got this, right? I was uh, recently speaking at the Rose Bowl and I was called in, which was an honor. I was called in to speak at a round table with some of, uh, some of the world's greatest athletes, which is bananas to me. I'm like, me? Little old me? Like, what am I doing here? They wanted my expertise. Um, they wanted my, my thoughts on mental health and athletes. Um, and performance because I'm a performer and I also specialize in mental health. So as both, they wanted to hear what I could say about what are some of the things that the NFL could do to improve the mental health of athletes. This is big, right? This is huge. So I'm here at this table and after you know, I don't know, four hours of speaking, with everybody there, everybody sharing their thoughts and ideas, the summary that everybody came up with was self-compassion. We need to learn how to practice self-compassion at a young age. We cannot base our worth on our productivity. We cannot tie our worth to achievements or anything like that because the NFL is starting to notice that a lot of these athletes once they once they're out in the field, they are not taking care of their mental health. They they have a lot of depression and anxiety, and but they have all these things, right? All these incredible things around them. But they're tying all of their worth to getting that Super Bowl, getting that win, and it's detrimental behind the scenes. And I know that a lot of us do that, right? A lot of us do that too with whatever it is that we are doing in our life, wherever it is that we want to achieve things. So many people are tying their worth to whatever they can achieve. But our worth doesn't come from that. Our worth comes from within just because we're human and we matter. 
You know, we don't improve by being criticized. And tough love, that, no, that doesn't exist. Love is supposed to be very caring and nurturing and safe. So we can bring, begin doing that with ourselves. One of them is the self-compassion hug. Um, how did you feel giving yourself a nice hug right now? Who was following along and how do you feel? Mm, I feel so good. Feel free to feel free to unmute yourself if you want to share that, how you felt giving yourself a really nice big hug. Alexa says, I don't want to stop hugging myself. <laughs> I feel amazing. I love that. Irina says, it, I feel so good, so relaxed, right? Isn't that amazing? Rebecca says, so nurtured. Bennett says, inner warmth and love. Yes. Janice Black says, Janice Black Warner says, this makes me smile. Yes. Oh my God. I don't want to stop hugging myself either. <laughs> So think about it, just in this short amount of time, we covered gratitude, positive affirmations, belly breathing, solfeggio frequencies, self-compassion, and these are all really easy tools that all of us can do every single day, and they're free. So these are all wonderful ways that I love to keep my self-care level up, my, mm, my neurotransmitters up, which are my serotonin, dopamine, the works. Aaron says, reminds me of holding my, oh, it got cut off, Aaron, your message. So, uh, it reminds Ahmed me of holding said, my babies when they were little, and then you would just rock them, you know, yeah, yes. the, the warmth, right? Mm -hmm. That warmth, Bennett said that warmth too, oh, love that. Ahmed says, I feel fuzzier than the charm in bear. <laughs> I love that. I feel fuzzier than the charm in bear. Exactly. And again, these are all tools that everybody could use. So now, ooh, Lisa says, I felt powerful that the only person that can love me good is me. Yes. Know how powerful you are. Know that that is true power. You can give yourself that. You can make yourself feel really, really good. You are nurturing yourself when you do this. So now, I'm going to guide everybody through a meditation, a theta wave meditation. But first, let me know how this sounds, okay? I'm going to go ahead and play a theta wave meditation. Aaron and I were trying it out the other day, and it sounded fine, but I want to make sure it sounds good right here. Can everybody hear that? Let me take a little second for it to work. Can anybody hear that? Liz says no. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. Oh, thank you for letting me know. I'm going to share my screen and see maybe if that helps. Okay. Lisa says it's faint. Ooh, thank you for letting me know. All right. So let's check this out. Tell me if you can hear this. I can't read the chat box right now as it's in full screen, but could someone unmute themselves? Or Aaron, can you let me know if you can hear it? Like Lisa said, it's very faint. Very faint, okay. But you can hear it though, right? Not really. I would share screen and then click the bottom left uh, share sound box and you'll get it. Shared screen. And then what was it, Johnny? So I would stop the screen share and then reshare it when you get the option. And the bottom left corner, there should be a share sound oh, option. You're a genius. Okay, I love this. The music producer at work. <laughs> I love this. Okay. Tell me if you can hear the sound. Can you hear it now? It may be a little faint.
It's still pretty faint, Brenda. It's still really faint. Okay. No. Okay. All good, everybody. We always, always improv. Okay. So I'm going to share the screen. Yes. Let me share the link. Liz says, maybe share us the link and we can try opening it individually. Yes, but you can open it individually after the workshop then, because if it's not working here, if all of us try and open it at once, it's going to be, it's not going to be, um, what do you call it? Cohesive, if that makes sense. But the video that I was trying to play, I will go ahead and put it in the chat box. And you can go ahead and listen to this after the workshop or wherever and whenever you'd like. This is a theta wave meditation. But regardless, I'm going to go ahead and guide us through a meditation. Okay. And this is going to be a visualization meditation. It's the start of the year. I would love for us to set some wonderful intentions for the year, visualize us accomplishing our goals. I'm feeling really good about it all, okay? So again, we're gonna do the inhale for four through the nose, and we're gonna do the exhale through the mouth for six, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and guide it. You can close your eyes. You can turn off your screen if you'd like. Whatever would make you feel more comfortable. But we're gonna do this for the next three minutes, okay? Just three minutes. When I say ready and begin, we begin. Ready? And begin. One, two, three, four. Exhale. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ready? Begin. One, two, three, four. Exhale. One, two, three, four. Five, six. Continue breathing on your own as I guide you through the next steps. Visualize yourself in a serene and calm place. Picture yourself in a place where you feel safe. Where is this place? Continue to breathe. Inhale for four, exhale for six. Where are you in this place? Who are you with? Picture the loved ones that you would like to share this safe and warm space with. What are all of you doing in this safe? Where are you in this safe space? Who are your loved ones? And what are you doing with your loved ones? Continue to breathe. And help with the floor. That's all for six. Now that you have a place in mind, I want you to feel being safe. I want you to feel being loved. I want you to feel the happiness. What does that feel like? Continue to breathe. Inhale for four, exhale for six. Now that you are here with your loved ones, I want you to share three intentions for the new year with them in this safe space during the activity that you have chosen to 
with your loved ones. What are three intentions that you are sharing with them? How do you feel as you're sharing these intentions? Visualize feeling the happiness that comes from these intentions. Visualize feeling the safety of sharing these intentions. Visualize feeling the excitement that comes from sharing these intentions. Keep breathing. Inhale for four, exhale for six. What are three intentions that you are setting for this new year? Visualize yourself actively participating in these intentions. Visualize yourself achieving these intentions. What does that look like? What does that feel like? What does it feel like to achieve these intentions? Now that you have shared these intentions with your loved ones, in this safe space of yours, I want you to say thank you to everybody for joining me. And I want you to thank yourself for achieving these intentions. When I count to five, you can go ahead and open your eyes and come back to center. One, two, three, four, five. You may go ahead and open your eyes. Take one last deep breath. How do you feel after that visualization meditation? And what were your intentions? Johnny says, my intentions, be self-compassionate, be light, and show up. Yes, I love that. Well, guess what? You already are all of that, so you need to choose new ones. <laughs> Irina says, that was so soothing, B. Aw, thank you. Janice Black says, my brain feels relaxed. Yes, absolutely. I love that. Mine does too. That's why I said yes, absolutely. I'm like, yes, I'm right there with you. Ahmed says, it's amazing. Okay, amazing. I'm glad you feel amazing. Now, what were some of your, your intentions that you shared with your loved ones during your visualization? My intentions for this year, let's see, is let things go when things need to be let go of. All right, go more with the flow and take bigger risks. Those are my intentions for this year. Angie says, love, peace, and health were my intentions. I love that. Lisa says, I felt calm. My intentions are to be more positive and don't get as upset when my kids are too much. To not react rashly when they misbehave. Wonderful. I love that intention. Aaron says, refreshed and grateful. Yeah. Ahmed says, to convey to them that I care about them and I will take more actions to convey that to them. Perfect. Ruan says, explore, go deep and go true. Wonderful. I love that. Rebecca says, my intention is to trust in the process with love and compassion. I second that, Rebecca. Yes. I'm right there with you. Trust the process with love and compassion. I'm right there with you. 
How does it feel to share these intentions? Right, it feels good. I mean, I'm speaking for myself. It feels really, really good. Alexa says, that was incredible. So soothing. My intentions were finding inner happiness, letting go of unnecessary anger, and follow through with my dreams. Oh, this makes me feel so happy. Yes. Go ahead and follow me on social media. That's my website and my email for those of you who want to stay in contact. All right. Official brand Z. And also, thank you so much, Janice Blackmore. You are an angel. Sharon Dunis, who is not here with us tonight. But, oh, my gosh. I As I said her name, she literally just came on the screen. Oh, my God. I love that. Sharon, thank you for joining us. I literally was just saying your name. <laughs> thank you, Janice, Sharon, Aaron Raftery, Ryan, Dorit Haroni, Adeline, she's not here, but she's amazing. Uh, Marianne, Elizabeth Stevens, the entire NAMI Westside LA team, and you. Thank you for getting mental with me. It has been an incredible time to be here with all of you. I am so grateful for all of you. Um, and I really hope that you had a great time. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, if you have any questions or again, want to stay in touch, I'll put my Instagram in the chat box. If not, feel free to log off and, uh, and have a wonderful night. Or if you have any questions for me too, I'll stay on for a couple more minutes. But thank you, everybody. I'm so grateful for all. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Brenda. That was amazing. Just a little round of applause for Brenda and that amazing compassion for you know teaching us self compassion and that meditation. It was just beautiful. A wonderful way to start our new year. So thank you, Brenda. I see some folks are jumping off, but if anyone has any questions, Brenda's here for a little while. I, I still have my theta waves going on in the background because <laughs> yes. what a what a wonderful um, tool that you gave us. And Janice Black Warner, thank you so much for all that you give to our community and having Brenda uh, present this evening. And of course, Sharon Dunis joining us. Thank you, Sharon, for all that you do and the trailblazer that you are. So just going to open it up for any questions for Brenda for the next couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. Sharon, I'm so happy you're here. Let's see. All right. Will this be recorded on our website, Brenda's talk, her full presentation? Yes. yes. Good. So we can get it from the website, www.namila.org. Yes. Thank you so much, Brenda. Oh, thank you, Sharon. Thank you. Oh, and thank you, Brenda. You are not only, I was on another Zoom by accident and I was talking about you and then I realized that it was for NAMI, but it was all these teenagers and it was not you. And I was thanking you and then I realized, oh my God, I'm on the wrong Zoom. <laughs> But thank you, Brenda. And as my speech went before, you are not only as beautiful on the outside, you are on the inside. And the belly breathing, we have to remind ourselves daily. Thank you for teaching us that and and give us. <laughs> You're amazing, Janice. Aw. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And again, thank you so much to everybody. Um, thank you for being here. All right. Uh, Ahmed says, started your gratitude journal last week. Love it. Oh, thank you, Ahmed. You're the best. Thank you. All right, everybody. It has been a pleasure. I'm going to be logging off, but have a wonderful night. I wish you all the best. Big hugs. All right. Thank you, Brenda. There's nothing like a gratitude journal. And then reviewing it a week or two later and and, and reminding you of what you're grateful for. There's nothing like it in the world. It's so positive for all of us. It opens the bus to possibility instead of darkness. It just Absolutely. opens us to possibility. Thank you for that, Brenda. Absolutely. Thank you, Sharon. You're incredible. All right. I love you all. Have a wonderful night, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.